Twas the night before Christmas Eve Eve and FC Barcelona headed 400 miles west to the city of Valladolid. In Barcelona's last away game of 2020, a miserable year for the club, and indeed for much of the world, a slice of history was made. Or at least, so it seemed. Just past the hour mark, with a flick of his trusty left boot, Lionel Messi rounded off a complete performance with a customary goal, his 644th for FC Barcelona. Congratulations began to come in from across the world of football before the final whistle had even been blown. Budweiser commissioned 644 bottles of beer for each of the 644 goals that Messi had scored to be sent to each of the goalkeepers that he had scored those goals against. Iker Casillas received 17 bottles, but penalty specialist Diego Alves was the top recipient, receiving 21 bottles in the post. It was a great little piece of marketing, and a fun way to round off yet another terrific achievement during the career of Barcelona's little magician. Four days later though, on what we in the UK refer to as Boxing Day, Santos' social media manager decided the club could hold their tongues no longer, sharing a thread detailing why Messi hadn't in fact broken Pelé's record for the most goals for a single club, with a link to their website and a statement from the club's chief historian. It prompted the latest flare-up in the age-old debate about how many goals Pelé had actually scored, and the internet's reaction was unsurprising. In the days since, jokes and memes about Pelé's goal-scoring exploits, often involving this image of Jose Mourinho, began to do the rounds on Twitter, all centering around the idea that Pelé claims to have scored far more goals than he actually did. Regardless of what you think of Santos's claims, and naturally, we are about to come to that, the mocking of Pelé on this occasion is a little unjustified. As far as I can tell, Pelé has not actually made any claims about his goal-scoring feats in comparison to Messi's over the last month and he actually took to Instagram to congratulate the Argentine on setting a new record. So this is a debate started by Santos, not Pelé, and one that he seemingly wants no part in. If my old school put out a thread on social media claiming that I once ran the 100 metres in under 9 seconds back in year 10, I would hope that people would take issue with that claim with them rather than me. But of course, Twitter is Twitter, so you can never be too sure. Now that we have established who is making the claim, we ought to discuss the claim itself and establish where the two figures of 643 goals and 1,091 goals actually come from, given that there is a rather large discrepancy between the two. There is another figure of 1,281 goals, which we might come to as well, although it isn't really relevant to the record in question. The 643 goals that Pelé scored for Santos that Messi is said to have recently exceeded is the number of goals that he scored in what FIFA now considers to be, or at least to have been, official competitions. This includes the regional Campeonato Paulista, the nationwide Campeonato Brasileiro, the continental Copa Libertadores, and now defunct competitions like the Torneio Rio Sao Paulo and the Intercontinental Cup, among others. In total, Pelé scored 643 goals in 656 games for Santos in these competitions, and no serious person or organisation disputes that they are all officially recognised goals. Just before we move on, I think it's worth mentioning that Pelé scored 66 goals in 46 games for Santos during the 1958 season, a season which started when he was 17 and ended when he was 18. In the world of baffling football statistics, that is right up there. One thing that you will notice if you ever take a look at Pelé's quote-unquote official goal-scoring record is that the number of goals that he scored seemed to tail off as his career went on, along with the number of games that he played in, just when he ought to have been hitting his prime. That isn't because Pelé's career began to fall apart when he was 25, if anything, that was when he was at the peak of his powers, but rather it was because Santos began to prioritise what are now deemed as unofficial games over official ones. Following the 1958 and 1962 World Cups, Santos, and particularly Pelé, despite him being injured early on in 62, were global superstars. Pelé was quite rightly considered to be the best footballer on earth, and Santos were not about to let a perfectly good opportunity to make money go to waste. During the 1960s, Santos were on tour more often than the Rolling Stones, delighting packed out crowds from Mexico to Madrid, and Pelé was the star attraction. Typically, Santos would travel to a country and play three or four games, either as part of a friendly competition or a series of one-off matches, and be on that way. It was a major cash cow for the club, but it diverted their attention away from their domestic and continental commitments. For example, at the start of the 1960s, Santos won five consecutive Campeonato Brasileiro titles and two successive Copa Libertadores titles. They were the best team in Brazil, the best team in South America, and in truth, the best team in the world, and by some distance. 
However, their domestic dominance came to an end during the mid-1960s. Not because Santos were no longer the best team in Brazil, or because Pelé's powers had been diminished, but because they were busy bouncing between Rome, Athens and Basel, facing Europe and the world's biggest and best on a routine basis. As Santos pointed out in their press release, there were years in which Pelé didn't play for more than two or three months in what are now considered to be official matches for the club, whether that be in 1966 or 1970. In 1967, Santos actually withdrew from the Copa Libertadores, South America's equivalent, to the UEFA Champions League in order to go on a tour of Italy, Spain, Germany and Hungary. You might very well say, well, tough luck Santos, you prioritised cash over recognised competitions and now your legacy has been damaged 40 or 50 years on. Ironically, of course, one of the major attacks routinely made against Pelé's legacy is that he never played in Europe or proved himself outside of Brazil. A truly bizarre claim to make against someone who won three World Cups, but one that is well and truly rubbished by Pelé's record in just these games against European opposition. Pelé scored prolifically against the best that Europe had to offer for more than a decade, whether it be in a friendly game against Roma or an Intercontinental Cup final against Inter Milan or Benfica. Nonetheless, even if you overlook the contradictions in some people's attacks on Pelé, I think it's probably a fair critique of Santos' policy during this time, and if you were to count games played and goals scored in Santos' friendly games, you would surely open the door to including every team and every player's accomplishment in friendly games as well. And whilst there are very good records on what happened in Santos' friendly games throughout this period, that is not the case for all teams and all players, particularly when you go back further than the 1960s. What's more, it's hardly Pelé's fault which games and competitions his club chose to prioritise, so whether you count those friendly games or not, suggesting that Pelé's legacy is thwarted in any way by their validity would be more than a little disingenuous. One thing it's important to clarify in regard to the argument made against including the goals that Pelé scored in friendly games is the idea that they were goals scored against rank amateurs or useless players and therefore equivalent to scoring a goal against your nephew in a park or against your reserve goalkeeper during a training session. This is simply not true. In fact, you could stake a claim that quite the opposite is true. Some of the weakest opposition that Pelé and Santos faced will have come in the regional Campeonato Paulista, in which Pelé was no stranger to putting five or six goals past teams in single games. A reminder that these fixtures are all considered to have been official. In friendly games, Santos tended to face off against the best teams on the planet, since that is where the money was. No one wanted to see the might of Santos putting 27 goals past Macclesfield Town. When Santos rolled into town, they would face the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona, Lyon, Versas, Roma, Inter Milan, Fiorentina, Feyenoord, Benfica, Hamburg, and so on and so forth. What's more, whilst these games were labelled as friendlies, they were quite different from your typical drab preseason that younger football fans may have become accustomed to. Santos were considered to be the best team in the world, and beating them was a huge achievement for any club. As such, teams didn't just roll over for Pelé, they did their utmost to stop him. In fact, some of the challenges put in on Pelé in exhibition games, from Prague to the Potteries, were as vicious as those which ruled him out of the 1966 World Cup. These were serious games against serious opposition, and still, Pelé scored goals for fun. I have previously made a video discussing the bizarre claim that Pelé is a fraud, asserted either without any evidence, or with totally bogus claims that can be debunked in a matter of seconds. So you can watch that for a more complete picture of Pelé, his greatness, and the idiocy of those who suggest that he was anything other than one of the greatest footballers of all time, should you wish to do so. Today's video is just about the number of goals that he scored, and I'm neither making the claim that Pelé's goals in friendly games should be included to take his tally for Santos up to 1,091, nor am I saying that they should be ignored and that the figure of 643 official goals should stand. In truth, I couldn't care less. The point of this video is just to contextualise Pelé's goals and career for the benefit of modern day football fans, to whom the idea of counting goals in friendly games will understandably seem absurd. Barcelona would never withdraw from the Champions League for a season in order to play a series of exhibition games in Hong Kong or Peru. So of course, the bulk of Messi's goals, official or otherwise, have come in the major domestic and European competitions. Pelé played for a different team at a very different time, and if Santos had the same focus on the Campeonato Paulista, Brasileiro and Libertadores during Pelé's playing days as Barcelona have on La Liga, the Copa del Rey and the Champions League during Messi's, Pelé would obviously have scored a lot more official goals. So you can disregard friendly games from Pelé's statistics, personally, I don't have any issue with that, so long as you understand that doing so makes any statistical comparison between Pelé and Messi totally pointless. 
To give you a good comparison, or at least what I think is a good comparison from an English perspective, to do otherwise would be like saying that Rach Carter can't have been that good at football because he only won 13 caps for England, ignoring the fact that he was one of the best players in the world throughout the period of 1939 to 1945, otherwise known as World War II, and that his appearances during this time, due to being wartime appearances, were not met with official caps. So it is perfectly accurate to state that Rach Carter only won 13 official caps for the England national team, or that Pele only, with only being in inverted commas there, scored 643 official goals for Santos, so long as you are aware of the context surrounding those statistics. Just as one final point, and one which I really cannot stress enough, this whole issue is so indicative of the cultish obsession with statistics in football these days. Statistics can be interesting, and indicative of certain aspects of the game in certain instances. They are not, I repeat not, the be-all and end-all when it comes to understanding and appreciating the beautiful game, quite the opposite in many instances, and they ought to be an absolute afterthought from a football fan's perspective. It is one thing for a club to take into account a player's successful pass percentage or average distant cover during games before signing them, but for most football fans, focusing on these statistics to the nth degree is just bizarre. Just as when you have to explain a joke, that joke dies, or when an English teacher deconstructs every stanza of Chaucer, the beauty of the words start to begin to perish, so too does the magic of football when you strip everything else away and focus solely on statistics. Statistically speaking, Zinedine Zidane was nothing special, and Ronaldinho never scored nearly as many goals as Mohamed Salah did during the 2017-18 campaign. And yet, Zizou and Ronaldinho are the two players who made me fall in love with the sport more than anyone else. Well, those two and Stuart Elliott, of course, but I left Elliott out of my example since he was statistically and aesthetically remarkable in equal measure. This point is particularly pertinent to any discussion surrounding Lionel Messi and Pelé, who are quite simply two of the most joyous footballers to have ever lived. Majestic on the ball, full of flair and invention, and equally devastating goal-scoring and creating forces, to boil either player down to their goal-scoring statistics for a single club does them a great disservice. It would be like comparing the merits of Mozart and Beethoven as composers and musicians based on album sales. Sure, there's probably some data out there, and it can probably be disputed, but to get into a debate about it is to completely overlook the art and majesty of what made both men great. So don't bother getting into a debate about Pele scoring more goals than Messi, or about Pele counting goals that he scored in friendly games. Both arguments are stupid, and in the time you spend making them, you could be watching actual videos of two of the greatest footballers to have ever lived. Or even better, videos by the greatest football YouTuber to have ever lived, the one and only HITC Sevens. To make the whole thing even more absurd, if you were to include all fixtures, official or otherwise, I'm fairly certain that neither Pelé nor Messi would hold the record for the most goals scored for a single club, nor the most goals all round. In fact, the record holder might just be someone you've never heard of, and that doesn't prove that they're the greatest player of all time either. That is it for today's video, but thank you all as ever for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and make sure, do double check to make sure, just just double check that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s. Oh, and you can also find me on Twitter or Instagram by the username at HITC7s should you wish to do so.